A former JUCO in Northern Colorado standout, Dalton Connect took the college game by storm this year in transferring to Tennessee as he became SEC Player of the Year, an All-American, a Naismith finalist, and a legitimate NBA prospect along the way. He's a late bloomer who didn't grow to his current size until after high school, but at a now listed 6'6", 200 plus, Connect is one of the very best shooters and off-ball threats in this draft and an impressive vertical athlete that can score in multiple ways and put up 8 30-point games. Fence in how high you should draft a 23-year-old, but his skill set was proven on a nightly basis against top competition and he provides a floor that some other prospects might not. Now, Connect's most obvious NBA skill is his three-point shooting. He was effective in many spots on the floor, shooting right at 40% total on good volume and over 42% off the catch, even with teams often game planning to take this away first and foremost. Mechanically, he's a limited jumper from three especially, which makes it easier to stay consistent. He has great balance, footwork, a high release point, and keeps good energy transfer with a minimal dip. And he does it consistently from NBA range as well. He's got all the pieces to shoot it at a high clip in the NBA as a valuable asset to any offense as a floor spacer and of course the splits back it up from both this season and previous ones. He's also one of the very best threats off of movement in the class. He has really good organization on the move in the field to find open spots weak side and moving along the perimeter. He's able to go either direction and I think teams can use him in multiple ways including as a screener to further maximize his gravity and abilities here. Now Tennessee ran him off a variety of actions. I really liked what he did on their baseline out of bounds looks and he was very good in floppy. Now while floppy isn't nearly as prominent in the NBA today as it once was, all the same principles of what he does apply to more common current NBA actions, but he was really difficult for teams to stop here. Now I do think there's a level of speed and conditioning that he may need to add to really see this part of his shooting pop in the league, but again, he was already effective here and liable to get hot at any moment. High and wide, he delivers right in the shot pocket, nine out of 10 times. Connects, he gets connect. Gets a good look. Long. Just slow down tonight. Just one for his first four. Back on the floor. No hesitation. And he's going to be the last guy to make a basket of Carmichael. Yeah, he went made a layup. Right? Made a layup. Connect. Right. Footer, not really a shot blocker. In the corner, here's Dalton. Connect. That's Tennessee. Is that right? Well, I'm just, that's what the coach said. SEC regular season champs. Connect. Catch and shoot. Baseline. The thing will not be out tough this year because they were multiple times last statement. Where do the points come from? Can they get Connect going? Corner three. Well, that's this is from the outside. The Gators, two of eight from three. Connect feeling it. Stop oh. week. Keep an eye on Dalton Connect. From deep with two guys in front. Yeah. Being trailed by Bates. Here he is. Deep three. In addition to relation to the movement shooting from three, he's also a legit off-ball scoring threat overall, capable of curling pin downs in the shots in the mid-range and taking a few extra dribbles to get to the bucket. He's also tough to top lock and often has counters for it as a talented cutter with good feel for finding gaps and reading the defense and the ability to execute more predetermined or option reads and set plays. He's comfortable taking what the defense is giving or overplaying and made teams pay for it pretty consistently and it makes him a fairly complete threat in this respect. Connect gets good position. Connection here. Connect off the screen. Left hand scoop up and good. Same conference play. Hey, Jimmy, boy. Jay shows on into this Tennessee lead. Nice pass. He do to connect. The matchup zone. Terrific call by Steve. But they're also the faster team to all those 50 50 balls. Connect with a cut, throws that in. Connect. Lays it up points. In. Good job by Florida being physical on that out of bounds under. Good look, and he punches. using that screen from Adu. 
Now beyond the shooting and off-ball play, he's also a talented scorer overall who is capable of making teams pay off the dribble. He may not project as one of a team's top creators, but any situation where he's chased off the line or when a defense is shifted or in rotation, he can definitely make something happen. He's got a solid handle and can get a look from all three levels. He loves using the hezzy and it pairs well with the threat of his shot. He also likes to push cross and he does a good job of using his frame on drives. On top of that connects a very good vertical athlete that can finish above the rim with dunks and traffic and I'd imagine he actually gets a little list of posters throughout his career. Big time finish. What a scene transition. Connect with the slam. Very good role player the transfer from UC Davis. At least for the moment Bill Self's going to leave him. Nobody covering connect. Took that draw board. How can he let this oh happen? Oh my goodness! Tom Howe. Three and orange in this game. Connect. Wow. Probably tried it this time. Indeed. But, oh, two hand check! All the analytics say that ball's going to drop about 47, 48% of the time. Connect. Boy, that's pretty. He takes that. And he's got a mismatch, and the guy with four fouls on him. They want him to be gone. I'm running out for Weaver State to make a run. <laughs> Connect sizing up Edwards, crosses and gets to the rim. Addition over into the team zone for a couple of years. Got away from it. Connect. Connect into the paint. Rises. We're trying to shake Thomason. Now it's Connect on the pull up. Despite the efficiency not being there all the way, his pick and roll game is intriguing too. I like his setups on screens, he has good pace, and can both get to pull ups and take advantage of the screen to get downhill and attack the big or help defense at the rim. And whenever he's freed up by that screen and can get a step, that's where he becomes really difficult to stop as a scorer. Now the big piece of this that's lacking a little more than you'd want to see is the playmaking, and it's probably going to be part of what limits him from doing this at more volume, we'll talk more about that later, but he certainly has the tools to score here in some capacity even if it is more second side late clock or just on an occasional basis shot clock down to five connect that's a deep three it's gone connect rises buries a three Now Connect's clearest and biggest area for improvement is on the defensive end. Contextually, he did carry a huge offensive burden for this Tennessee team, so that certainly impacted his approach and performance here, but even with that in mind, he'll still need to clean some things up on this end. On the ball, he isn't the quickest laterally and at times gives up advantages out on the perimeter, especially against more guard-oriented players and ended up in recovery. The closeouts can be a bit sloppy and his general ground contact when changing direction is probably just a little longer than you'd like. Now, he did do a pretty good job of sticking in plays and getting back just enough to impact shots. That margin for error at the NBA level becomes a lot smaller and can quickly go from being right there to getting you or your big dunked on or just putting your team in rotation. So even with the improvement still being necessary, I didn't think it was alarming on the level of let's say like a Duke AJ Griffin or someone that would be a complete liability even though he has his work ahead of him. This pass first kind of guy. The color. Blocked by 800 victories. And a finalist for the Naismith Wall of Fame. Yep. Announced for the first time in December. Shireman. Fall off tonight. Right around the corner. Drove hard screen. Behind the back from Baker. Darby Gulf Connect. Well, they've been switching some, but Griffin, when he's been on him, has done a nice job. Off the ball, there's still a level of discipline that I want to see in his rotations and certain help responsibilities, but you can see the effort and for the most part, he at least saw it even if he was a step or two behind. He fits in best as a team defender who will guard other off ball threats and weaker creators in the NBA. So that does mean this stuff becomes even more important, especially playing in the corner as much as those guys often do. There will be a learning curve to NBA rotations and help responsibilities, but the likelihood that he's solid here is far higher than him getting to a spot where you're 
loving him matching up with the top 10 to 15 wing creators in the league. And I think because he has good size and can hang athletically, he should be able to survive in many ways, kind of like he did this year as part of one of the country's top defenses. The hope is that with more dedication in a smaller offensive role and hopefully a decent context in terms of personnel and instruction, he can at least be somewhere between below average and passable, maybe even a little bit better than that. And over the years I've learned with wings, that usually works out at a much higher rate than both bigs and guards. Sinan flushes it. Ingram down to Tennessee. Here's Tyrese Hunter. The real attack connects. All step up collectively. Josiah Jordan James heard the message well. Mitch is out and Size advantage. Damask turning. Connects. Awaka is all over him. Four on the shot clock. Kalkbrenner turn around. No. Passing or playmaking wise, I do think he got better this year, but I'm still mostly neutral on this part of his game. He's typically unselfish and an okay decision maker and should fit in well as a team playmaker. He's also capable of making basic drive and kick reads, but everything else might not be a big part of what he does. He was in that score first role once again, but even in that, I didn't see the type of vision or passing versatility that I would have liked to here. There is a possibility that he gets into a situation where he could eventually grow into being better with more reps and better teammates, but for now, I think that he's probably more of a team guy and ball mover who will make his impact felt on extra passes, in transition, and other basic ways. And for what he does best, that's probably just fine. Pushing. Not a good start for the Tigers. Explosive by the ball. Balls up by eight, looking for more. Connect out to Ziegler, left alone for three. It's gone. A nice response from LSU. Even though Connect is a pretty good vertical athlete, he's not the quickest or fastest in a lot of ways, and it shows up both in his creation and some off the ball, as we mentioned earlier. I don't think he's quick enough or creative enough in his handle yet to be that full-on secondary creator in a good situation. i say the first step is solid, but there were a lot of times when that initial move was cut off and he'd immediately rely on his body or just give it up, and I think it could be a bit of a task to separate against NBA level wings in non-ball screen situations. There is always the possibility his talent Talent and shooting threat will allow him more time to find other counters and just figure it out, but having the expectation of him being one of your primary creators is maybe just a bit unfair. And then off the ball, he can be a bit upright and not the guy that's going to outrun too many NBA athletes off screens. Now here, I do think he is capable of getting better and realistically as soon as his first year or even in the next few months if it's a point of emphasis. But to maximize that potentially elite area of his game, he'll likely need to improve here in some capacity. I don't think it's going to be a big issue because he has such good vertical and physical tools, but I think he can be a bit more consistent as a finisher. The splits were fine at about 60% total and in the half court, especially in this context, but there were plenty of easy ones that he smoked, especially on tougher angles, and to me he just left a noticeable amount of buckets out there. He does get to the line at a good rate, he's not a small guard so this isn't like a do or die situation, but if I'm looking for spots to attack and get better, this is one that I would keep up there just given the NBA length and speed of the game. And finally to some age questions people might have, going back to the 2014 draft we have 9 players picked in the lottery who were 23 or older during their rookie season. Those in order are Doug McDermott, Frank Kaminsky, Buddy Heal, Denzel Valentine, Cam Johnson, Obi Toppin, Davion Mitchell, Chris Duarte, and Ochai Abaji. There's also Justin Jackson who went 15th in 2017 and Corey Kisper who went 15th in 2021. Now it is too early to write the book on some of those recent guys, but it's clear that it's tougher to return lottery value outside of Buddy and Cam Johnson. We do have other cases like Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, even a Larry Nance, and then Austin Reeves and Fred Van Vliet who were picked or picked up later and did ultimately provide that. So it's not like being that age makes it impossible to do. Now in Connect's case, I think the fact that he was 5'6 as a sophomore in high school, graduated at 6'3 and continued to grow and ascend every year in college on the way to putting up career best numbers as soon as he hit the SEC makes his situation a little different than others and a class like this only helps his case. I do think with the history that's there is definitely worth considering, especially the higher you go, but he's still a unique prospect worth evaluating on an individual basis.
Ideally, I see Dalton connect as a high-level shooter first who can take on some ball handling and team playmaking responsibilities and make decisions off closeouts, and then defensively playing the team role, hopefully with a good context on that end of the floor, eventually landing him in that plus starter to rotational player range. I'm not sure there are any true swing factors for him. I think it's fairly cut and dry, but the defense has the best chance to change the level of impact that he could have. He likely lands somewhere from the top 8 to 10 ish into the mid teens, with the best fit to me being teams like Orlando, Philly, OKC, LA, and maybe Memphis. I think all those spots would be beneficial for both sides with the need for his shooting on the wing, and I like the defensive structure that they could provide for him. And comparison wise, I think there are a few that are solid. One is Grayson Allen. Connect is a little bit bigger and his scoring ceiling is a little higher than what Grayson has produced so far in his career, but that type of impact and role is a real possibility. Tim Hardaway Jr. is another one that I like. And the way Connect played at the college level reminded me a lot of Bogdan Bogdanovich. So if he ascends as a creator, maybe it looks a little bit more like that. Don't Connect's combination of size, shooting, and scoring versatility make him a fairly easy sell as a lottery pick in this class, even as an older prospect and one with questions on the defensive end of the floor. There's reason to believe he'll be able to come in and contribute early on, and in a class that has a handful of guys with more perceived upside but far less production to fall back on, I think he'll have a lot of teams interested towards the top.